All right, in this video, we're going to talk about limits, and we're going to work through limits graphically. So if you have your graphing calculator, please take that out. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time here just because limits are super important. It's sort of the foundation of the course, and hopefully by the end of this video and the end of this chapter, you feel very comfortable with limits. Okay, so first we're going to analyze them graphically, okay? And I'm going to ask you to put the graphs into your calculator. We're going to analyze the chart, and we're going to kind of relate it to maybe how would we do this without a calculator as well okay so we'd start with a function so let's say for example we have this function here so this is a function we often graph in algebra 2 or pre-calc it's a rational function okay we spend a lot of time on rational functions because they're interesting right you can get holes you can get asymptotes and that's where we talk about limits okay it maybe approaches an asymptote but doesn't touch it Maybe out at infinity, it approaches a horizontal line, which is a horizontal asymptote. So limits come into play a lot with rational functions, okay? So if you recall, when we graphed our rational function, what we did was we would find the vertical asymptote, we'd find the horizontal asymptote, and then we'd pretty much either plug it in our calculator, pick points, and graph it. Occasionally, we, we would get a hole in the graph, okay? And if you even remember, sometimes we've got a slant asymptote. So I'm going to start with my function. So I'm going to rewrite it as y equals. So it's x plus 2, x minus 2, and then all over x minus 2. So even when you start this question, the issue is going to be at 2, right? We know that we can't plug 2 into this function because we're going to get 0 on the bottom of the fraction, okay? So typically, if you remember, for vertical asymptotes, you set the bottom equal to zero, but before you do that, you want to cancel. Okay, so in this case, this actually cancels. So it's not a vertical asymptote. We have a hole in the graph. So there's a hole at x equals two. And if you remember to get the height of the hole, you plug into the simplified version of the fraction because we know we can't plug it into the original because we would get the zero on the bottom, right? So if you plug in, you're gonna get four. So I plug in, I get four. So the hole is at two comma four. Okay, so we could do a lot with limits and holes in the graph. So let me just graph it here real quick. So you can have x plus two. So that's up to two. So up one over one. Now at two, it's at four. So it's at four, but it's a hole. So it looks like that, okay? So this is a common idea in calculus. We'll have a graph, we'll have a hole in the graph, but the graph still has a limit. So a limit's going to be the y value that the graph approaches as I approach a particular x value. So right now we're talking about at x equals two, okay? So at x equals two, what's the behavior of the graph? All right, so let me do, yeah, we can do this. Okay, so as I approach two, so two is here, okay? So as I get closer to 2, so I'm moving this way across the graph, my graph's getting closer to this height right here. As I approach 2 from the left-hand side, the graph's decreasing, right? The y values are coming down, and it's approaching, getting closer and closer and closer and closer to this height here, okay? So in this case, we could say that the limit as x goes to 2 of my function, so we'll say f of x is equal to 4. Okay, now there's no point, we can't say f of 2, so f of 2 does not exist. But I don't care about at the particular point, I just want to know what is my graph approaching. So again, you want to get as close to 2 as you can, so as I keep getting closer to 2, right, to get close, 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 my graph is getting closer and closer to 4, okay? Now, as we do limits, and as we progress through the video, you'll see, but you always want to check the left and the right. So in order for a limit to exist, they have to be approaching the same value. So I went ahead and I put this into my calculator. You guys, you need to be able to graph on your graphing calculator. And what I did was I created a table. So I went to my table, but it didn't have these values in the table, right? These are kind of odd values that we're looking at here for the axis. So what I did was I went to second, window i believe and it's table set and you want to put it to independent variable it i think it says auto 
forget what the other choice is, but you, you want to be able to input the value. Okay, so I don't think it's auto. It's, I don't, I don't, I don't remember what word they use, but you're going to slide over so that you can input the values. Okay, so you're going to plug in 2.001, 2.01, and it will spit out these values. So if I look at this from the right, so as I approach 2 from the right-hand side, so I'm bigger numbers, I'm to the right of 2. It's so like 3, 2.5. 2.25, 2.1. My y values are getting closer and closer to four. I can keep going. Is you could get you could never reach two, theoretically, right? You could do 2.0001, 2.0001, and so forth and so on. And then this is just going to get closer and closer to four. So that's the right. Come from the left. Same thing. 1.999. Could do 1.9999, et cetera, et cetera. Get as close to 2. This gets really close to 4. Okay? So what is the definition of a limit? Is for the limit to exist, it has to be a real number value. Okay? So, again, think of just a basic, basic function. As if you had y equals x squared. Okay, it's a parabola. So if I said to you, let's do the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared. Now, we haven't really talked too much about limits yet, but if you were to graph this, we'd have a graph. So at 0, it's 0. At 1, it's 1. At 2, it's at 4. So there's my half parabola, right? So as I approach 2 from this side, 2 from this side, you'll notice my graph is approaching that height approaching two, it's approaching that height. Okay, so there's no hole, there's no gap, there's nothing of concern. So you're really actually just plugging in the x value to get the y value. So the limit is the point in this case. Okay, so as I get closer to two, it still reaches four. The other thing I just want to touch on is the idea of infinity. Okay, so we're going to come up with, with graphs that maybe go to infinity positive, negative. So let's say we have a vertical asymptote, right? So vertical asymptote would, would look like this. So let's say this is x equals 2. And I have my graph. So let's say it looks like this, and it looks like this. And I want you to find the limit as x approaches 2. So technically, the limit does not exist, okay? Because it's not approaching a real number value. So it doesn't exist. That is a valid answer. That's a good answer. Most of the time in AP exam, that, that'll get you the correct answer. So we could say the limit as x goes to 2, we'll call this f of x, equals, you could say, does not exist. But what I like to do, when what I'm going to want you to do once we do infinite limits, is I want you to put positive infinity. So the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x equals positive infinity. It's, this still means it does not exist. So please understand that I'm not stating that the limit exists. What we're doing is we're saying, you know what? We can, this is a better description. So who's ever reading this question, you're telling them that you understand that the graph is going to positive infinity. It still does not exist, okay? So if they're in agreement, they both go up, positive infinity. Let's say you had one that went up like here. one went down here. So in this case, we'd have to say that the limit does not exist because as I approach from the left, it goes to positive infinity. As I approach from the right, it's going to negative infinity, okay? So again, we're gonna use the idea of positive and negative infinity, but you can always put does not exist. All right, so here we have a piecewise function. This is kind of a boring piecewise function, but we could say the top function is y equals one. So we're going to get a horizontal line. On my entire graph, except when x equals 2. Because we do a lot with piecewise functions. You need to understand that this is actually giving you the limit. Because if you think about it for a second, if, if I had a number line here, let's just look at it this way. We have 2 here. We're saying it can't be 2 but it's everything else is okay. So that means every number to the right and every number to the left. So essentially we're talking about the limit, okay? But let's go ahead and graph it. So we're saying we have a horizontal line, but not at two. So at two, it, 
it's an open circle like that. And then it's a horizontal line. So it's going to go this way. And then it's going to go that way. So this is almost like a distractor. So it's when x is 2, y is 0. So it looks like that. But they're asking us for the limit. So the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is equal to 1, right? So let's look at it. As you come to 2 from the left-hand side, it, the height of the graph is 1. As I come to 2 from the right-hand side, the height is 1, okay? So we get this. I don't know why they threw this in here. Um, it's just a distraction, okay? Now, if f of... 2 was equal to 1, that would mean this would have been colored in. The only the limit would still be the same, so that really doesn't matter, but in this case we would have what we call a continuous function. Like there's no holes or there's no gaps in the graph. We can draw the line without lifting our pencil off the paper, okay? All right, so let's talk about one-sided limits. Is the AP exam demands, they give you points for every little step of your question, so they demand that you define limits correctly. And to do that, we have to look at the left and the right hand limit. So when you look at this graph, you can always get a one-sided limit, okay? So you really shouldn't be putting does not exist for a one-sided limit. So if we were to look at this, I could say the limit as x goes to c, on the left-hand side, we'll call our graph f of x again. So as I approach C, so C is here, on the left-hand side, I'm getting closer to C, the height of my graph is approaching K. And that's the answer, okay, because I just asked you for a one-sided limit. We could do the limit as X goes to C of F of X from the right-hand side now. So coming in from the right, coming in from the right, coming in from the right, it's approaching this height here at L, so we get L. So each one-sided limit exists. Now, if I asked you for the limit as x approaches c, so this is the definition that the AP exam expects you to show that you understand. So we'd say that the limit as x goes to c of f of x, we would say does not exist. And oftentimes they tell you justify your answer. So this would be our justification. Okay, because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. Mathematically, we could write something like, I don't know, the limit as x goes to c from the left of f of x is not equal to the limit as x approaches c from the right of x f of f of x. Okay, so, you know, you might just be able to look at the graph and say, you know what, it does not exist. Okay, I'm just looking at it. It looks, it, there's a jump, right? We call this a jump discontinuity, but there's a jump in the graph. But they expect you to state this, okay? You're going to have to get used to justifying your answers, okay? In nice, short mathematical statements, okay? All right, so that's what I just did. So this box up here is the definition of a limit. So I'm not going to redo it, but it's basically stating that for the limit to exist, okay, so for the limit to exist, Limit from the right has to equal the limit from the left, okay? And again, it seems at times you're not going to want to do it. It seems redundant or tedious, but they do expect you to do it. You have to justify your answer. So why does the limit not exist? Well, because when I come from the left and come from the right, I get different values for my limit, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and graph this piecewise function. So the first one is negative 2x plus 5. I'm going to start up at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm going to erase these points because they just want this graph greater than 2. But I'm going to do rise over run here. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So they just want this graph from 2 greater. So it's going to be from this point through like that. And I'm just going to get rid of those two points. Okay. The next one is negative 3, 
one, two, three, and then up one over one, up one over one from two to the left. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw this way. All right, so now I can answer these questions and then I'm gonna show you how you could have answered these questions without using the graph. Okay, so that's important too because a lot of times you're not gonna have to graph. We can do these just algebraically, analytically, and just figure them out without making a graph. But on a note, on a side note, is if you're ever, ever stuck, sometimes making a graph can get you out of a pickle, if you will, okay? So, I mean, for example, just to throw a random question at you, but if they ask you for, let's say, the limit, as x approaches zero from the right, right hand side of ln of x, I mean, without a calculator, there's not much you can do here, okay? ln of zero doesn't exist, so you can't plug it in. Okay, but that's not a good enough answer, okay? So you could say, well, let me graph the function and let me see if I can come up with the behavior of the graph as x approaches zero. And sometimes you're just going to have to do that. I mean, there's no other way. So let's say we create the graph. This is a graph I recommend that you memorize. It's a log graph, so it goes through one zero. Looks like that, and it goes like that. Okay, so now I can answer the question. As I approach zero from the right-hand side of this graph, it's going to reach negative infinity. Okay, so again, most limits you can do without graphing, but sometimes if you're stuck, graphing might be the way to go. All right, so we graphed the function, so we did that part. Limit as x approaches 2 from the left-hand side. So here's 2, so I'm coming to 2 from the left-hand side. It's going up to negative 1. Then I'm going to approach two from the right-hand side. So I'm coming this way. It's going to the height of positive one. And then it's asking for the limit as x approaches two. That's just quick and easy. We could say does not exist. If they asked us to justify our answer, we would say that the limit as x approaches two from the left, is you have to put something here. You can't just put the limit of as x approaches 2 from the left does not equal. You have to state of what? So of f of x is not equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. Okay? So they want proper math when you write this stuff out. Okay? All right, this one is an interesting one. I'm not going to do the table. Well, maybe I will. But let's just talk about this um, in terms of number theory if you will, okay? If you plugged in, as I approach zero, you wanna test the left and the right, and it's very important, okay? So you wanna test from the right. That would imply positive numbers, and we wanna test from the left. That would imply negative numbers, okay? So let's say we start with three, and then we plug in two, and then one, and then a half, so we're going to approach 0 from the right-hand side. If you plug in 3, you're going to get 3 over 3, which is 1, right? If you plugged in 2, you get a 2 over 2, which is 1. If I plug in 1, so plug in 1, you get positive 1 over 1, you get 1. A half, you get 1, and so forth and so on. Because you're getting the same value in the top and the bottom. That's why we're getting 1. So to the right of 0, it's always 1. So I'm gonna do this like that, okay? It's, it's never going to be zero, right? That does not work because you get zero, zero. Now we're gonna test from the left. So if I plugged in negative three, the top becomes positive three over negative three, which is negative one. So now I go negative three, I'm getting closer to zero, so negative two. So you're going to get 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. You see the pattern here, and we get negative 1. It's going to look like this. So because you have to test from the left and the right, limit does not exist because one's changing sign, right? So that's a common theme. Normally we do one-sided limits for this, and you should get an answer. Like if I ask you for the limit as x approaches here from the right-hand side, I'm just going to call this f of x. 
you're actually going to get just one. And, and that's a common question on the AP exam, okay? So they'll have you do a one-sided limit so you get an answer, okay? But because it's not one-sided, we're getting two different points here, two different Y values, and that's why it does not exist. So this does not exist. So hindsight, if I was to do the table here, this we can't do. From the right, it's positive. And from the left, it's negative. And you don't need a calculator to tell you that, right? Because you have x over x. So you're going to get 1 or negative 1, OK? All right, this one, we're just going to talk about the graph. And again, is graphing right now is very important, OK? It's important to understand what is happening. So if there's something like this, if you had a graph of function y equals 1 over x minus 2 squared, the first thing we do here is we graph the vertical asymptote. So we know that at x equals 2, remember you set the bottom equal to 0, so at x equals 2, there's a vertical asymptote. So let me graph that. So that's at x equals 2. So I went ahead and I put this in my calculator. So we're gonna gra our graph is going to look like this. I don't know if you remember, but to find horizontal asymptotes, if the power on the bottom is bigger, it's y equals 0. So that means here, my x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so graph looks like that. So again, you could say that the gra the the limit this part of it, we could say does not exist. But because you have a graph, we can, we can make a better conclusion. Instead of just saying does not exist, I could say, you know what? Since limit from the left, limit from the right, they're both going up towards infinity, we can say that it's equals positive infinity. Okay, so I, once we do infinite limits, which there's a whole section on it, once we do infinite limits, I'm going to expect you to be more descriptive in your answer, okay? The only time you'd put does not exist if you had something that was not in agreement. So maybe like this one here up to the left like this and then down to the right. So in that particular case, you would say does not exist. All right, this one's weird. You would definitely want to have a calculator for this one. Um, so I would graph this on Desmos. So what ends up happening here on Desmos because you don't really see it on the graphing calculator. You actually just get like, uh, it's like an oscillating function like this. Okay? So when you get an oscillating function like that, the limit does not exist. Okay? You have to plug these values in you would need your calculator. But, but basically what you're doing here is you're, you're going towards zero from the right-hand side. Because these numbers are getting smaller and smaller. Okay? So if I plug in, I get 1 negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. So we have an oscillating function. The limit does not exist. So on that note, okay, please write this down. I did not put this in the notes. There's three cases where the limit does not exist. So three cases. So the first one I'm just going to say is an oscillating function. We don't do much with oscillating functions. The second case would be a vertical asymptote. So we did an example with that, okay? Yes, it goes to infinity or negative infinity, but technically it does not exist, okay? And the third case would be kind of like a jump in the graph. So a jump in the graph. The way we addressed it was we'd say that the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. Okay, so those are the three cases this is mostly what we're going to be dealing with, though. Okay, vertical asymptotes, and then checking the left-hand and the right-hand sided limits to see if they're in agreement. All right, so let's finish up with just practice here. Um, you could read through this if you're having a hard time with finding a limit off a graph. Um, but again, this is review, so hopefully you guys are fine with that. Um, so for the bottom part here, we're going to do the limit as x approaches 0. So I'm checking the left and the right. So I'm coming to 0 from the left, 0 from the right. The graph is approaching 6. We're approaching 6. So it's 6 for that one. 6, approaching 6 from the left. 
so six is here. So as I approach six from the left, it's approaching this height here, which is just four. Okay. Two from the left, so two is here. Coming from the left-hand side, it's approaching zero. Negative six is here. So this one's weird. Um, not sure the AP would ask something like this, but they don't try to trick you. They challenge you, but they don't try to trick you. I almost feel like this is a trick question because if you come from checking negative six, you have to check negative six from the right and the left, and there's no graph here from the left. It's almost like on a closed interval. So you, you can't do the limit, okay, technically. We could do a right-hand limit. As I go to negative six from the right, it would be zero, but there's nothing here from the left-hand side, okay? This one, one, so I'm checking one. So here, going to one, it's approaching here. One from the left, it's approaching here. So the answer is three, okay? They almost feel like this is a distractor. You just have to ignore that, okay? They're not asking for f of one. Now they are now, but they weren't in the last question, okay? So now it's asking for f of one, which is just simply one. F of two doesn't exist here, but it exists here, so it's equal to two. And then here we're just gonna say does not exist. Again, as you should be able to tell just by looking at the graph, as I approach two from the left, it's this graph here, which is going to zero. Two from the right is this graph here, it's going to two, okay? So they have to be in agreement. Left and right have to be in agreement. All right, let's run through this real quick. Um, so these are properties of limits. They're kind of self-explanatory. Again, I'm not gonna spend much time here. You guys went over this last year. Um, almost seems a little silly here, but when you have multiple limits or multiple um, functions, I guess, inside of the limit, you can separate it. Okay, so for example, I could do this one as the limit. Now you could always take constants out too. Actually, let's do that first and then I'll show you why it works. But you could take out the five and we could do the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Now they give us this, which is three. So this goes to three, so five times three is 15. Now, why does that work? Well, you could actually separate it. So we could do the limit as x approaches c of five times the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Okay, so this was given, so this is three still. But this is going to be five because it's a constant. So you almost have to think of it as a horizontal line. So it's five all the way across. So as you approach any x value, it's going to be five. Five times three is 15. Okay, so you're really just either writing it as two separate limits, but do you really need to do that? Not really. I mean, you could simply say this is going to be 2 plus 3, which is 5. I mean, sort of, we're going limit as x approaches c of f of x plus limit as x approaches c of g of x and so forth and so on. Okay, they get 2 plus 3, which is 5. But I'm not going to write it out again and again. All right, so this one we're multiplying, so it's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. And this one we're simply dividing, which is 2 over 3. So common sense prevails here. And then lastly, um, is the bottom line is occasionally it's a very simple limit. And you need to just plug in the value, okay? So... Because if you were to plot the graph, let me just do the first one and then I'm not gonna do the rest, but if you plot the graph, you're gonna get something like this. Upside down graph, shift it up one unit. Looks like that. There's no holes, there's no gaps, there's nothing weird going on here. So if I want the height of this graph as X approaches one, I simply plug in, I need the Y value. So we're simply going to plug in, okay? So if I plug in, I'm gonna get zero. This we would be concerned about four, but it's not asking us at four, it's asking us as X goes to three. So I'm just gonna plug in. So we're gonna get the square root of four because three plus one is four. 
over negative 1, which is negative 2. Okay? Here I'm going to plug in 0. H is going to 0, so 0 plus 0 is 0. And then the last one, this is kind of an interesting one. This will come back in Chapter 2. Um, so they're only sending H to 0. So this goes to 0. This goes to 0. So I'm going to get 3x squared. And we'll end. All right, we'll leave it at that for right now. Um, this will make sense when we begin Chapter 2. But it is what it is at this point. For, for letter D, they're only asking for H to go to 0. All right, you guys, hope this video helped. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.